Welcome to day 289 of our BU 365 day challenge. Do one thing every day that improves us. Today, let's talk about the perfect paradox. Sharon Hornell from here. And the perfect paradox is awesome and perfect. And it applies to each and every one of us, whether we know it or not. And at some point we learn the lesson ourselves and we realize that we're like, oh my God, that's absolutely true for me. And here's what it says. It says, the more honest you are about your faults, the more people will think that you're absolutely perfect. So the more honest you are, the more authentic you are, the more you just go out and be yourself in the world and share the good, the bad, the ugly, the warts and all, uh, your strengths as well as your weaknesses and acknowledge your weaknesses and maybe there are things you just don't even care about. The more you're yourself, the more people are attracted to you, the more they like you, the more they think you're perfect because everyone on the planet, we secretly wanna just be loved and accepted for who we really are. We don't want to wear all the veils and the masks that we put on. How do I know? Because for decades, literally decades of my life, I acted like and showed up like I thought I should. How should I be a good employee? How should I be a good leader? How should I be a good mom, a good wife, a good friend, a good sister, a good daughter, etc. I did all the things I thought I should do. And a lot of it was just a small percentage of me. It wasn't really me being me. It was me being what I thought everybody else on the planet expected me to be. Uh, and then I had a sudden cardiac arrest and dropped dead. And one of the things I woke up thinking more than anything was that because I'd always struggled with, well, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Why am I on the planet? How come you know, what am I here to share? How am I different than everybody else? Because all of us are different, even though we're so similar, we still are all unique and snowflake and different, right? We're just like a snowflake. There's billions of snowflakes and every single one is different, which is mind blowing, right? To think that every, every human being that exists, that has ever existed is unique and different and special. But that's what makes life awesome, right? Is that we are different. Uh, but I woke up thinking, everybody me especially all I need to do is be myself and always be growing and learning and becoming a better version of myself but not anybody else myself so modeling people yes copying them no learning from other people yes doing exactly what they do and acting as if you're them no faking it till you make it. I, a lot of people in business and in life say, well, you just fake it till you make it in, in, for whatever you want. And there's a difference between faking it and acting as if, at least in my mind, acting as if you've, cre you've created something already is you becoming that thing, having that characteristic, having that skill. You faking it means you're pretending. So not only are you lying to other people, but you're lying to yourself as well. Acting as if to me is a positive way of moving toward what you want. Faking it till you make it is uh, just what it is. It's like hacks and cheats codes and things. It's, it's not figuring it out and doing it and understanding it. It's taking shortcuts that may work in the short term, but they're probably not gonna help you be successful in the long term. So be yourself also because everybody else is taken. If we're all unique and special, we're all here for the impact that we're supposed to have on other people, not that someone else is supposed to have on other people. Would we all like to be Tony Robbins or Russell Brunson or I can't think there's so many people, you know, that I, I look up to and admire. Uh, are we all? No, we're supposed to be ourselves and the version of ourselves because your gifts are different than anyone else's on the planet and only you can share them with the world. Uh, I actually really learned this in corporate America uh, in corporate America and in, in business and having jobs was one of those places where I learned early on through trial and error, peer pressure, culture, and experiences, both positive and negative, that you showed up in the way that was appropriate for that culture, for that environment. And we still need to do that. I, I as a leader, believe that leadership is always situational. Uh, what we do in any situation has to take the situation into account. So one of the places I realized uh, that I was showing up with a whole lot of masks and a whole lot of veils and only a small percentage of myself was when I was working for other people and when I was in corporate America. And 
I, my last job, I call it my last job because it's the last job before I, I left corporate America for good. I always had a side hustle, which gave me a unique sense of confidence and security, personal security, uh, because I could do more and stretch and be more comfortable stretching my comfort zone in corporate America. But I wasn't to the point in corporate America where I would stretch it so much that it would go against what my bosses wanted, what uh, was the right thing for that environment. And I think it could be because, you know, one of my first jobs out of college was at a company that had a very rigid, very strict culture and norms. And you were socially punished if you did not adhere to and follow those norms. Now, I've never been that good at uh, conforming 100%. So you can imagine I, I bumped up against many walls there. But that formed my belief that I had to be only a percentage of me showing up when I was in working in corporate America and working for other people. Uh, but my last job, I worked for a huge industrial bakery that ended up uh, selling. And that was what gave me, let me give myself permission to say, okay, I don't have to work in corporate America, try to raise my family, and have my side hustle businesses all simultaneously. I can just do my businesses, have more freedom and flexibility, be myself. But the last job I had, I decided as I was interviewing for jobs that, I don't know if I consciously decided this was gonna be my last job, but I did consciously decide I was gonna show up and just be myself. I was gonna be who I absolutely positively am, show my core values, my skills, share my experiences, and my personality. I wasn't going to tone myself down to fit into any corporate culture or environment because I was starting to realize that who I am was an advantage to those businesses. And I wanted to link up with a business and work for a business that would help me to grow and develop more by being myself than by pretending I was someone else, putting on veils and masks, going along with the program. And did I ruffle a whole lot of feathers in that business? Absolutely positively. But I did I also have massive positive change and impact on that business? That as well. Uh, so I gave myself permission in the job interview, which was a pretty grueling process actually. It was back in the day, and I don't know, it sounds like they do this all the time now, but back then, uh, I think it was 19... Might have been the uh, on 1999, maybe 2000, right in that ballpark. Uh, I I met with a bunch of people and had interviews, a bunch of the corporate executives and had interviews, and the owner. And then they decided they'd have me in for a group interview to a leadership meeting. So all the people that would be my peers, the president, the vice presidents. Uh, the people that would report to me in the function that I was going to be running. And they all just got to fire questions at me, which was, I got to tell you, the most fun interview I've ever been in. But the, the truth is, as I was preparing for that, and I knew it was going to be everybody could just ask me whatever they wanted, the only way I figured I could come out of that the way I wanted to and and be was to be who I am. And so I did that and, of course, got the job, worked there for five years, and then... Uh, as they transitioned and sold the company, I, uh, I, I, got, I didn't get fired. I got laid off, right, as part of the transition because, I, frankly, I made more money than my entire team combined. So it didn't make sense to keep me when I set my team up to be able to run the function on its own. Two functions, actually. So big lesson learned and ex positive experience that being myself, although I still had uncomfortable interactions with other people sometimes because people got pissed that I was showing up and I could be who I was when they were still living in the box of conformity and in the box of I'm going to do exactly and behave exactly how I always have and that was me being myself and showing up and being situational challenged other people to do the same it also gave them permission to be who they are and and bring all of their strengths all of themselves to the organization not just a small part of it like I'd been doing for for years so uh, in our relationships in our conversations in our communication in sharing our expectations in all of the roles and the different things that we do all the activities we do we need to be ourselves I guess that's my 
clear message today. It gives our, by being ourselves, we give ourselves permission to grow, but we also, and learn and become the best version of ourselves, but we also give everyone around us the same permission, which we all want. We all don't need it. Nobody needs permission to just show up in the world authentically and be themselves. That's what we're supposed to do, but life beats us down every time. I mean, I remember being a little kid and I was too much for a lot of teachers and a lot of people because I always had tons of energy, tons of energy. I mean, I always joked I should have been a boy because I was so hyper and had so much energy. And uh, I, I would suspect now, back in the day that we didn't know anything about ADHD, etc. but I would suspect that I was absolutely positively ADHD and dyslexic. Uh, but over the years, I had to figure it out. I had to figure out how to overcome those things or how to function in a world that wasn't set up to handle people that are different. And guess what? We're all different, so the world needs to be set up to deal with all of our differences, but not in a negative way, in a positive way, and embrace those differences because that's what makes the world work. So our action item today, let's just share one thing, the one thing that we think makes us the most different, most unique, or the one thing that is just absolutely positively us. What is one thing, and you might be afraid of it, you might want to embrace it, but you haven't yet, whatever. Just share one thing about you that's unique and special and different that you want the world to know. All right, have an awesome day. If I can help you in any way, ask. Otherwise, we are going to be talking about, I'm starting to sneak ahead and pee. Uh, what's the paradox tomorrow? Tomorrow's paradox is proximity or close paradox. All right, have a fantastic day. I'll be with you tomorrow.